Another right. hire here. Yeah. The Titans officially announced the hire of Coach Brian Callahan, the Bengals offensive coordinator. He's bounced around uh, as a quarterback's coach a couple different places, including Detroit before that. And they make a promotion here. Their GM, Rand Carthon, is now executive VP slash GM. So he oh. gets promoted. Chad Brinker uh, gets promoted to president of football operations. So Mike Rabel out the door. A lot of change in Tennessee. Jay, as they go, the offensive rapper. A guy, Brad Callan, he didn't call the plays with the Bengals, but is highly regarded around the league as an offensive mind. He seems like kind of the art house version of Ben Johnson, kind of like the memento to Ben Johnson's interstellar, um, if you will, where he doesn't see, he's not a loud name, he's not a big name, but it's just got rave reviews all across the NFL. This is an offense that, frankly, has been stale for a while now, and maybe having a creative mind can get the best out of Will Levis, who I think we all think has immense potential, though he is very raw. He is. I think also a big you know, layer for this hiring to me that we have to keep an eye on is if his dad comes with him, the offensive line run game coordinator for the Browns, who is basically an Bill, NFL legend for his position Bill, at this point, Bill Callahan. Bill Callahan is widely considered like the best offensive line coach by in mile. football by a mile. He's, you know... He's bounced around the league, but again, he's a legend. He's been there to his father, and certainly, yes. Like, you know, I, I don't know what the Titans' plans are. It seems like they're going to move on from Derrick Henry, but yes, if Bill Callahan comes with his son to Tennessee, help fix that offensive line, which was a huge issue for Game the changer. Titans this past year uh, as well, that would be really interesting. He was an offensive assistant. Brian Callahan was an offensive assistant for the Broncos when Denver won the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning as the quarterback. Manning had this quote, uh, quote, not only did I benefit from his coaching and all the help he gave me as a quarterback for the Broncos, but also just thoroughly enjoyed being around him and coming to work every day. I think it's a great hire for the Tennessee Titans. I know we'll give the Titans everything he has. I would agree. I'm sure he will give the Titans everything he has, and I'm sure Peyton enjoyed being around him. I mean, but all due respect, like the Broncos' Peyton Manning, you know, year was Peyton Manning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I – I don't know there's many people in the NFL that could be like, you know, Peyton, actually what you should have done there is an out round. Right, he didn't you know, know, like, it, I don't it, know it, if you missed the guy in the flat. Especially like, that season two, because he was literally just winning it at the line of scrimmage. Right. The arm hat went down a little bit, so that was all here. It was like, 100% that's how he won, all... won the Super Bowl there. They had the defense. So, sure. Yeah, I get yeah, what he you're was just saying like, right oh, there. Hey, they're like, Linebacker's not looking at you, Julius. We're doing another seam route. There you go. <laughs> Julius Thomas had, you know, a, a billion yes. touchdowns yes. that year. It was literally like, uh, 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 but, uh, you know, Hope Springs Eternal for Brian Callahan, obviously, again, comes from NFL royalty, has been in winning success, you know, whether it was, you know, starting his career, uh, you know, um, and obviously as a young man uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the Broncos, being with the Bengals for a number of years, under Zach Taylor, comes from the Sean McVay tree. Uh, so, you know, we will, we will certainly see what happens here with Brian Callahan and whether he calls plays or, some, or he brings in somebody else to do that. Because to your point, he did not with the Bengals, but certainly around. The other thing that that that's here is that he saw. I mean, I think people forget how bad the Bengals were when Zach Taylor took over. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, and so helps when you draft Joe Burrow. Yeah, well, they were but, they got the number one pick to yeah, draft yeah, yeah, exactly. Burrow, and then so, they won four games. I think Burrow's first year before he yeah. tore his ACL, and then they went from that, and no one. Except, I think the Bengals, the year that they really ascended, the first year, they were like twenty-five to one to win the division, and they just came out of nowhere. Correct. Burrow wins comeback player of the year, uh, and then the rest is history. As we were recording, we got some live breaking news here, guys. The Panthers have hired a head coach, and that is Bucks offensive coordinator Dave Canales, wow. who. Uh, it was his uh, first uh, staying first, in the division. Bit of a surprise. It was his first year as offense coordinator for Tampa, but we we talked about this offense every week because Baker had a resurgent year. It was really an all-around surprise year for Tampa Bay. And Barry, this feels like a, a good move for Bryce Young, at least, for a team that needs to get that offense right in so many different ways. Well, I mean, here's you know, it, it's the easy comparison, but it's the one everyone's gonna make, so I'll go ahead and just make it, right? Baker Mayfield was a guy that was a number one overall pick that had struggled, that had shown flashes, and you knew the talent was in there, you know, um, and but had been inconsistent, to be kind, throughout his NFL career. He comes to Tampa Bay and under under Dave Canales, because, I mean, Todd Bowles is a defensive guy. So, yes. I mean, the, the entire Buccaneers offense was really was Canales. And under Dave Canales, Baker Mayfield has what I would argue to be his best NFL this season. Is, year. is oh, sure. you know, statistically and just from the field and just from uh, from the eye test, his best NFL season. So now you've got Bryce Young, who's a young player with a lot of talent. We know there's talent in there. You know, Bryce Young didn't forget 
how to play football between right. his senior year at Alabama and his first year in the NFL. Doesn't have a lot of weapon, a lot of weapons around him. And I think, you know, there was a coaching change in the middle of the season. There just there was a lot that happened that sort of messed with Bryce Young's head last year. And so now you've got somebody in Dave Canales who showed like I can take a um, a talented but inconsistent quarterback and get his head right and get him playing football at an elite level. And so that's the hope, obviously, here that happens with Bryce Young. Now, if he has Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, that's going to help a lot. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Instead of like, you know, <laughs> right. the, the ghost of Adam Thielen and DJ Shark. But uh, ultimately, you have to figure that the Panthers will address other positions as well. I think the other thing with Canales, and I'm not sure everyone knows this because I think people only realized who Dave Canales was like five weeks ago just because he wasn't in the spotlight at all in the first half of the season when the Bucks were floundering. In last season... He was Geno Smith's coach. He was the quarterback yeah. coach for the Seahawks. And so he fixes, he helps fix Geno Smith. Yes. He helps fix Baker Mayfield. Uh, and so I think it makes a lot of sense that that is the type. Whether he's good or not, we'll see. But to go for that type of archetype to try and, quote, unquote, fix Bryce Young. And the, the best thing about it is when these head coaches take these jobs and they, they know who the quarterback's going to be. So you have to believe. And, the, like, there's a reason Jim Harbaugh's coaching the Chargers and not the Falcons who interviewed him. There's a big reason he did that. The thing is that is that I, reason Desmond Ritter because he's not good. Not certainly not as good as Justin Herbert. Um, I almost you know. got Lawrence. I almost got him. <laughs> yeah, he kind of for a second. Okay, I almost yeah. got him. I almost got him. Uh, they powered through it. You know, they'll have to do something with the roster. You, like you said, he was working with Geno Smith last year, but there's a DK Metcalf and a Tyler Lockett over there, so they'll have to do something with the roster. Uh, maybe Jonathan Mingo takes a step, but they're going to have to add a lot on that side of the ball at every position so you know good luck and congrats to this man but your point but Lawrence jokes aside your point there I think is very well taken which is that I remember when they were interviewing when the Vikings were interviewing for head coaches a couple of years ago and there was there was there was conversations around whether Kirk Cousins would return to the Vikings they ultimately ended up franchise tagging him but what I heard from uh from sources was that the interviews were basically like the people that came in and said all right we got to start over they were they they were looking for somebody that came in and said I can win with Kirk Cousins. Bingo. I I can win with Kirk Cousins, right. and that was Kevin O'Connell's one of his pitches, and that's obviously what ended up happening. And he so far he's proven correct, right? He's been able to win with Kirk Cousins. It's like I, and so I suspect to your point, especially given the fact that uh, David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, was you know widely rumored to be the one to basically saying I want Bryce Young, and sort of you know. He's he's kind of pushed all his you know chips into the middle on Bryce Young, especially given the success of C.J. Stroud, who went just after Bryce Young. That yeah, that anyone that came in here had to basically be like, give me the job and I'll make Bryce Young work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Not, and, not no, I don't know about and, this. You know, no, I don't know. We may in. have to start right. over. We should see if we can trade for Justin Fields. None of that stuff. No, no, no. Somebody. So I agree with you, and I think that's a great point that's probably going to get overlooked here. But right. He fixed Geno, he fixed Baker Mayfield, and now he gets Bryce Young. And yes, those guys were more veteran and they had better weapons around them than Bryce Young does, but the positives are Bryce Young is is young and uh, you know, you've got some time to work here under a rookie deal. Connor, how would you evaluate Bryce Young now? Because I think look, a lot of rookies have bad years in their, their first year, but with Bryce Young, I think the concern was that there were just so few flashes outside of maybe the Green Bay game where it seemed to click for him. I think you need to build his confidence back up first. I mean, there, he's not a big quarterback. He's not going to be a huge runner at the next level. He's not going to be Superman like we see. A lot of the guys left in the playoffs right now, not Goff, but Lamar, Mahomes, and Allen, they could all play like Superman. You're not looking from that, even though he's a former number one pick. You need an offense that's based kind of what Mike McDaniel did in Miami, where it's timing, you're getting the ball out, you're creating space and creating yards after catch opportunities. They just don't have the weapons at wide receiver to do that yeah. right now, and they don't have a first-round pick. Yeah. So that's the battle this team is going to deal with. They're either going to have to get creative in free agency or a trade to get that wide receiver, and they're going to have to make the most of their picks in the draft because uh, you need to help out Bryce Young. He simply didn't stand a chance this year. You know who would have been good? Who, who would be great in Carolina is DJ Moore. That would be a perfect fit. DJ Moore would be a per if there was it's a they shame for if there was a way that they could because DJ Moore is so good after the catch and everything like that and good in time. Go it just a long way. Feels like that's like that. If I think about one guy in the NFL that I think would be good <laughs> in Carolina, I feel like DJ Moore just sort of comes to comes to mind there. The other thing, last thing on Bryce Young here, as I just want to say is just you think about this poor kid. Right, like comes into the pre-draft process, everyone like about your know, size, you know, your your size and everything like that. But the other thing is, is that Bryce Young was at Alabama, where 
everyone he had was basically an NFL level prospect right. and like they were just better than everyone at every position. And, and so you go out there from a feeling of confidence, from a feeling of being a favorite of, you know, being dominant. And now you have to go to an, an NFL team that is the complete opposite that of every single way where they're, de where they are uh, talent deficient at almost every position against a team that, you know, in, in every team that they play. Right. I mean, they're, they're basically, they didn't have a better line than anyone they would play. They wouldn't have better receivers. They wouldn't have a better, you know, like it's just you, you feel for Bryce Young is all I'll say. I feel for Bryce Young. Well, when your coach get fired, it ain't good. No. So well, there you go. No, this is factually correct. This is factually correct. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.